Here I am in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Let's analyze the opening sequence to the 1940s Italian classic Bicycle Thieves. What I'm gonna do is play for you the first two minutes and then we'll go back and analyze this sequence almost shot for shot. Here's what you need to pay attention to. The main character, Ricci, how he's introduced and how he is distinguished from a large group of men but also blends in with them. This movie hits on a major theme, the individual person being a part of the masses or being a part from the masses. And you're gonna see that dynamic happen visually in this sequence. It's really exciting stuff, let's take a look at it. Ricci. C'è Ricci. 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 Andiamo de vonno, ma che sta sorda andiamo? Io questo muratore devo morire da fame e te la vieni con me, come se fossi io, io non ci posso fare proprio niente. Un po' di pazienza e vedremo di sistemare tutti quanti. Io sto qua per questo. Vedremo un po' quello che si può fare. Ari, c'è il posto? È il posto? Attacchino. Stai da presentare al centro affissioni. Gli dai sta carta e ti porti il libretto. C'è niente per noi. Mannaggia la miseria. Oh. E qua? Per noi. Ci sono due posti per tornitori, ma qui i tornitori non ce ne stanno. E se io non sono tornitore devo seguire a stare qui a fare la muffa. Oh, e che te vuoi? Sfogare con me? Ari, ricorda di portare la bicicletta. E eh, ci vuole la bicicletta. C'è sta scritto pure lì, no? La bicicletta? Ce l'ho e non ce l'ho. Subito no. La posso avere fra un po' di giorni? Eh no, ce l'ho subito, se no non te viene. E non è uguale. Sti primi giorni faccio il servizio a piedi. Parliamo se chiaro, Ari, ce l'hai o non ce l'hai sta bicicletta? Se non ce l'hai bisogna dare il posto a un altro. Ce l'ho io la bicicletta. E che ce l'ha solo tu la bicicletta? Ce l'ho pure, pure io. Pure io. Ce ce pure io. Pure io. Ma tu sei muratore, sei di un'altra categoria. E cambia la categoria. Ma non si può. Allora, Ricci, sta bicicletta c'è sta o non c'è sta? C'è sta, c'è sta. Stamattina mi presento. Oh, non fa ma coglionasse. Se non ti presenti con la bicicletta non c'è niente da fare. E che sto aspettando altri due anni. Mi presento con la bicicletta, non c'è da fare. Mi presento. C'è Cadaldi. Eccomi. Ma la vale per due giornate al cantiere del tufello, si te va. Ma no, a capo non me va, ce l'avevo tutto. Ma che ve li posso fabbrica io li posso. And that ends the scene. Let's go back and take a look at this amazing sequence which announces basically the major prop problem, all the major themes, and is so tight and so well constructed. I'm just amazed by how this movie goes about its business. So let's take a look and, how it, and see how it does that. So this is the first shot of the movie right here. What's really interesting about this shot is that we are close into the building where all the men are. The next shot we're gonna pull back out and see an establishment shot of the wider surroundings, the geography of the scene. So one question is, why does this movie start out with this shot and not that wider shot of the whole scene, of the whole setting and where this building is at the very beginning? You know, ordinarily in movies, in scenes, you're gonna see the establishment shot first, the building, the larger location where people are at, and then it's gonna cut into or move into a shot just like this. Why does this movie reverse that? Well, I've got a couple of ideas. One, it wants to be about the social dynamics of what's going on in 1945, 1946 Italy. Remember, this is right after World War II. Lots of unemployment at this point, and we're seeing these hordes or teams of men right down here have trouble finding work. The movie is about that very problem, the lack of work, unemployment, the poverty at this moment in time in the city of Rome. And so the movie, I think, starting with the shot, wants to be about that very dynamic. And then it wants to talk about the differences between high and low, people who have money or who are employed, and then down here, people who are unemployed, very poor, close to starvation, in fact. And that's a dynamic that we'll see throughout the entire movie. I want you to notice how this shot is composed. I'm hinting at it here. There's a status hierarchy, a socioeconomic hierarchy, that is, the person on top, this one single individual handing out jobs, he probably has money. He probably lives a reasonably comfortable life versus all the masses, a large group of people down here. So we see one elite sort of person above and then a 
bunch of lower class people below. And note they all blend in. He's the face we see first. He's the dominant in the frame, the thing we look at first. And then this mass of lower class people down here sort of all blend together. You know, there's nothing that makes any one of them unique or stand out versus this guy. Now there's some tension in this already. You see this angle here of the staircase, some angles here on the wall, and this guy's kind of boxed in actually. It's really interesting the threat perhaps of the teams or hordes of people coming up and attacking him perhaps, or at least being able to overwhelm him. He is not actually in as much a control as he thinks he is perhaps. And I think this odd angle here of the staircase actually adds to this composition and makes it things seem a little bit off. Certainly it allows some separation between this man here and these hordes of men down here. It's not just that he's high up and they're low down, but then this physical divider right here. Now the first question asked is, where is Ricci? Ricci, the main character in this movie, is going to be given a job. The rest of these guys at the bottom of the frame, they don't get any jobs, okay? So Ricci's going to be special. The movie's going to really work hard to say that Ricci is one of these men down here, but he's also different from them. You're going to see a man come from this crowd here and go to find Ricci, and then that gives us the wider establishment shot that we need to see where these men actually are in the world. That movement towards the left is really interesting. You know, I don't always like to read movies this way, but I think in this case it's true that moving to the left in this is a political signal. Going to the left is different from going to the right. You know, at least in America, I also think in Europe they say left versus right. So as far as political divides, political sides. So going to the left is going to find Ricci. He's out there to the left. Now this is the wider building area in which these men uh, abide. And as I said, this is the establishment shot that we should have at the beginning of the movie. He's gonna go over here and note that Ricci stands apart from everybody. He's actually sitting down right here. He's being called over to this place over here. And yet, so he's different from everybody else and yet he's similar. This movie wants to celebrate the individual hero as a lot of movies do, perhaps almost all movies. You know, we have our individual main character here. He's special, he's different, we should root for him, right? The movie wants to single him out as somebody different from the rest of the people in the movie. However, it's going to also work hard, as I said, to make him a representative of the poor masses of men we see and all people in Rome at this time. So you'll see him blend in with the crowd and then stand apart from the crowd and he'll go in and out of the crowd throughout this entire movie. It's really amazing how the movie works that way, basically signaling that he, as I said, is a representative of a social class. In other words, this individual right here stands for a whole class of people who are being oppressed, who don't have jobs, who we need to, you know, feel for and do something about, right? So you'll see that here, him, him going into the crowd, but then going above the crowd in this particular shot. And this is real nice camera work here as he, you see him move over here and it cuts here. And he's blending in, but note he's being called and he goes above. Nice shot there. And what's interesting about that, as I said, this shot, like the very first shot in the movie, has a hierarchy. There's an above up here and a below down here socially, socioeconomically. He has just risen out of the masses because he's the one who has a job, right? And the rest of these guys are unemployed. That makes him different, that sets him apart, that puts him in this sort of world above uh, the, the unemployed below. But then we cut to this shot. So that means there's some tension here visually. The last shot showed him above everybody else and different from the masses. Now, he is standing apart from them, but he's blending in with them. And note the representation here. He's one with them. He's the one who's going to represent them here. Clothing-wise, maybe the way he looks on his face, he blends in with these guys as compared to this guy over here in the suit, the nice suit who's giving out jobs. We are, have an over-the-shoulder shot of this guy, and here's the mobs of men who are unemployed down here. So these two shots, the one before this and the one, this one, show that this character is sort of different than but alike to his social class. It's really interesting how the movie does that. And now we're gonna get the announcement of the plot problem. This character is gonna get a job where he's gonna put up posters, 
but he needs a bicycle. Thankfully, he's got a bicycle, but in this movie, the bicycle gets stolen. That makes him a threat to, you know, lose his job and become one like these guys and become impoverished. So really, the whole plot, I'm going to go get a job, but my bicycle is going to get stolen, comes up here, and then the movie just launches straight forward. I love this about this movie. It hits the ground running, and in two to three minutes announces its plot problem and then just runs with it the rest of the movie. I wish a lot more movies actually could be this sort of economically tight, pun intended, with the script and then keep going with it um, as opposed to you know taking 15, 20 minutes to announce what the whole premise of the movie is and the plot problems and so on. So this movie is great work here. Now we've seen reaction shots. So this is the second reaction shot and we'll see some jealousy or, or envy amongst these guys. The reaction shot means these guys are looking at what's going on and they're reacting to it and this gives us another point of view on the matters at hand we see these jobs of this particular job of the poster being you know given to one guy but okay what about these other guys so we have this cause that the movie announces what about the whole mass of men who are unemployed we're only going to give a job to one guy what about the rest of them and that's what they're saying right here what about us so the movie is actually about a whole social movement socialism social problems social injustices and that's announced right here by these reaction shots as these guys are jealous of Ricci who gets a job now you get these this shot right here this isolated shot going back over here I says he says I've got jobs for lathe operators so Ricci's um, qualified but you see you now in this shot Ricci is apart from the masses he's part of this world up here so that's all the tensions between these angles and these shots show that Ricci is in and among the men but he's different, way different from them, and he's being singled out as special and unique here. And of course, when he loses his bicycle in the middle of the move and he can't work, you know, that brings up the problem of him descending down into the hordes of the unemployed. And the whole threat to this movie is that Ricci is going to become the person who goes down into that group of guys who's going to say, what about us? I don't have a job. And then his family, as we see later in the movie, is under threat because he doesn't have a job. Anyway, Ricci is now blending in with the guys right here. He's gone above now he's coming down and he's asking about the bicycle and the bicycle is a tool an instrument a piece of property that he must have and if he's too poor to own a bicycle he can't work right so the idea of this movie is a person needs to be you know it's a paradox you need to be wealthy enough to own a bicycle but how can you get wealthy enough if you can't get a job right so these guys are saying oh i have a bicycle i have a bicycle and we're going to see a million bicycles in this movie, but Ricci is going to lose his. So here we go. More shots of Ricci in this boss figure. And now we're back to square one. That is sort of the shot we saw at the very beginning of the movie, right? So the movie sort of returns, or the scene returns to this very point with the angled staircase and so on in this high versus low dynamic. Now, here's Ricci. He says, uh, the boss says, if you don't have a bike, forget it. Ricci says, I'll get the bike, and note him descending there, and look, he's blended in with the crowd, right? So this dynamic of him becoming part of the hordes is really interesting. I'm going to take a little moment to show you a couple of other shots in this movie that do exactly what this particular shot or scene does, because you're going to see, well, you're, usually in movies, you see the same things repeated two, three, four times. If you see it once, you're probably going to see it two or three more times. So let's take a look and see how Bicycle Thieves does that. All right here's a little shot of a church setting in which you see Ricci in the crowd and then he's going to come and, you know he's noticeable here because he's the focal point he sort of stands out but he's part of them and yet he's being urged to get out of there this is a church scene you're going to see him in the city and other scenes just like this and he's the one that's dynamic he's moving around whereas the crowd is static right so that that's what makes him different from the crowd and yet he's hard to notice right here or his son is hard to notice they're all part of the crowd in the church and now, spoiler alert, I'm going to show you the last shot of the movie. I don't think it's giving really anything away. This is his son, Ricci's son right here. And we're going to see Ricci over here. And then this is Ricci and his son. And then you see, this is the last shot of the movie. He's noticeable, noticeable, noticeable until he's not. You know, in the beginning of the movie, he was apart from the group of men. He summoned to become a part of them, to go into the crowd of men and then ascend up those stairs to get his job at the end of the movie, 
He's a unique individual who goes back into the crowd, and now you have a faceless mass of people. You have these masses who need help, they need employment, and so on. Richie's part of them. Now that you've seen the movie, you ought to feel for him and his family and his plight. Thus, you ought to feel for the social class here. So here you get this whole political argument in this movie made through visuals that show how an individual blends in with the masses, but also is different from the masses. And yet, because he's different, he captures your heart. You know, you, you empathize with him. Thus, you empathize with the rest of the social class. That's the main idea of this movie. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.